Grand Prix tonight. This is for the 2013 Indian Grand Prix. It was pretty interesting. There's lots of strategy calls, lots of overtaking, and what has been won the one man and our new world champion. The 2013 Formula 1 world champion Sebastian Vettel crossed the line to become the youngest four-time world champion in history, joining the likes of Juan Manuel Fangio, Michael Schumacher and Alain Prost, who won the title four times and joined another exclusive club of, four, of, the, of drivers such as Juan Manuel Fangio and Michael Schumacher, who only won the championship four times in a row. It's an amazing achievement and well, just looking at the pictures and all the videos and that of the footage of Sebastian's reaction when he came out of his car, like on the podium and it just, you could just see, you could just, just see and like just looking at him that he is so like amazed and surprised and I was, when I was reading the, I was not reading the listing, the interview that he had with Lee McKenzie and the BBC, he said that um, he, was just, he, he looked down on um, Schumacher as his, as his idol, not really, as exactly his idol, but role model in Formula 1, and now he's pretty much beating him, like he's matching his performance year after year after year, and, now, and then he said that people will be looking down at me, just like I was looking down at Schumacher. And you can just see in his in his like in his expression that he is gobsmacked. He's absolutely not exactly surprised because well, none of us I think nobody in the F1 world is surprised really because Red Bull has been so dominant. The for the Sebastian Vettel has been so dominant throughout the season, and well, he's deserved it really after a um, pretty interesting season. wasn't really as hard as last year. I think last year was his hardest World Championship yet. 2011 wasn't really, uh, but 2010, nobody wasn't really expecting him to win the championship. I mean, the, world was, the odds were pretty bad, but Red Bull just kept on developing the car base after base. They got better and better, and they won it at the end of it. And yeah, big congratulations to him, and also to Red Bull for um, taking the constructors for 2013. Um, so that means lots and lots of money, but come on, Red Bull, they're not exactly. No, it's like a short money anyways, but anyway, it'll be good for our um, development and perhaps they could give it to the young teams. Not. Probably for Toro also, but anyway. Um, also for Red Bull, Mark Webber. So unfortunate. He, Everyone was really excited about this race because they, everyone knew he was in the best position. Starting fourth on the on the primes, the medium, medium tires. The tires were a big played a big role in this in this ra today's race. Um, the results were predicted to last at least 10 laps, 10 to 15 laps. Um, and well, Sebastian actually pitted in lap two, just to get the results out of the way. Do one lap, well, two laps in the options, pit for the primes, and then do two stops on the primes. Um, so that went very well for him, obviously, since he won the race and the championship. Um, Mark was catching him. Mark was catching him on the mediums. I mean, well, even though um, Sebastian won, was on the younger set of primes, Weber was on the much warmer, like already alive set of primes. So he was catching him up. But then at the worst possible moment, he got the call saying to stop the car because of a gearbox failure. He lost sync with the gearbox. The gear, the gears weren't um, syncing up properly. No, <laughs> self-explanatory, really, isn't it? But then it turned out that was an alternate problem. And if you, if you remember last year in Monza, both Red Bulls retired because of the same problem, and Sebastian Vettel retired in Europe and the Valen in Valencia because of a. Uh, um, alternate problem. That was really crucial for his championship, but that was very crucial for his championship. Um, and obviously he won last year's championship. Um, and like, Red Bull were very concerned that they've seen it before in the past. Both Red Bulls retired because of the same problem, and it could happen. This, it could happen in the base, like Sebastian could retire. But Alonso finished out with the points. Um, a 
Alonso finished uh, 11th. He was one place. He was about two seconds. Uh, he was two seconds off Daniel Ricardo, who was the last points finisher. But that was done. Was never going to be good enough for Alonso. Like at the moment, Alonso had to finish all. Like went every single race since Sebastian to finish like ninth or worse to become driver's championship champion and that was never gonna happen. Red Bull's reliability has been pretty good at um, throughout this throughout the year. But I just keep thinking it's weird that's Weber who has the problems and not Seb. I just keep thinking that Red Bull's got some special destruction button on the pit wall for Weber. Just pressing his car just creates some random blocks by anyway. That was a shame. That was a could have been a win for uh, Weber and his last in the Grand Prix and an in the Grand Prix that we probably wouldn't see for quite some time actually because it's not on next year's calendar and apparently some organisers haven't been paying taxes from last year's race and apparently it might not happen ever which is a bit of a shame um, since oh, I love the track oh, I didn't really like it before but when playing on F1 2013 I just love the float the track really now it just it challenges the driver in terms of strategy for the t and the strategy for the teams as well for in terms of tires. Um, but anyway, Alonso had a broken front toe, I believe. I think it was a front left toe because when he was turning left, it was very heavy steering. He said, and when he was turning right, it was very light steering. So that was very uncomfortable for him. He had that when, well. Weber and Kimi collided with each other and Weber slowed down because of that and Alonso didn't expect it and he broke his front wing like um, and I think that apparently damaged his suspension as well and it was unfortunate I would have liked to see Alonso win the championship but it was never going to happen but anyway the race results first was obviously Sebastian Vettel second was Nico Rosberg which apparently is his only podium in which he didn't win the race like all the other podiums he won the race this is his first podium of the season which he hasn't actually won the race so it's pretty surprising but uh, yeah pretty good to see him on the podium third once again is Roman Grosjean driver of the day I think for me I believe started, six, started 17th after a poor qualifying call from um, his from Lotus on, on Saturday and he just made the tires absolutely last 40 laps I believe was how long his primes lasted and fairly recommended 35 laps and then pit for safety for, for safety but he managed to do at least 40 40 45 laps and Kimi Raikkonen also managed the same amount of laps as well and that was amazing it just shows just shows with a good competitive car with a car that's light on his tires these these fairly tires can actually last fourth was Massa which once again out outraced his teammate which could potentially um, help him when he wants to move to a new team which perhaps could be Williams when Pastor Maldonado is leaving fifth is Sergio Perez really good strong drive He's trying his very best after a poor start to the season. Poor first half, he's trying to build up back up in the second half to prove that he is good enough at McLaren. And I believe he is. I mean, after last year's performance at Silver, with a good car, he is very strong. But unfortunately, McLaren never had a good good car this, this year. Only now they are starting to build up and get back to what McLaren used to be. But fifth is, fifth is not pretty much nothing. No points for McLaren there, in the fans' point of view, but anyway, fifth is pretty good. It's like this Hamilton, who are complaining about the tyres, Mercedes are really tough on his tyres. I mean, this is one of the toughest tracks in the season, in terms of his tyres. Um, so, that was a dead play a crucial moment, but unfortunately Hamilton couldn't, um, okay, Hamilton couldn't manage the tyres properly, but sixth isn't, sixth isn't really too bad. Um, seventh is Vikingen. Um, eight is Paul De Resto. It's been pretty quiet. I mean, nothing. At last he has finished a race, <laughs> but he has been quite, pretty quiet. Not a lot to be said by him. And behind him is uh, Sutil. In tenth is Daniel Ricciardo, um, who wants to impress Red Bull before he actually goes into Red Bull himself. Now the Jarvis Jarvis Championship. Obviously, Sebastian Vettel will stay at the top with 322 points, the magic number that he needed. Well, I didn't really need, but you know what I mean. Two is Alonso with 207 points. 
Third is Vikingen with 183 points. Fourth is Hamilton with 169 points. Fifth is um, Weber with 148 points. Sixth is Nico Rosberg with only four points behind and 144 points. Seventh is Gour Roman Grosjean with 102 points, followed by Massa with 102 points and eight. Ninth is uh, Jensen Button with 60 points and to finish off the top 10. After them 16 in India is Paul de Resta with 40 points. So very close between Grosjean and Massa. And after Ashley Bell it is pretty close actually. Um, Lycan can still overtake Alonso, but it depends if, if Ferrari can actually keep up the development of the car and if they can keep having um, a confident and not a confident but competitive car. That's what I was trying to say. And Hamlin could take third place. I mean, right now that he's matching his his finishing position from last year. He finished fourth last year after being taken by his teammate Jensen Button. And I think he could have a potential third place or even second place. But actually, no, nah, not second place. I think third place is um, his a really good place for him to finish. Uh, Weber, fifth. I think he could take fourth if Hamilton has a problem. But anyway, just, I don't know. It's, it's a bit tight at the moment. It's, it's just, it's, it's unpredictable, really. F1's been unpredictable all season. And well, this is a little bit of fun, really, so unpredictability. So, constructors, Red Bull Racing, 470 points. Second is Mercedes, who overtook Ferrari with 313 points. And third is Ferrari with 309 points. So, it's pretty close for second place in the constructors. Fourth is Lotus with 285 points. And fifth is McLaren with a huge drop of 93 points. Sixth is Force India with 68 points. Seventh is Sauber. 45 points, 8 is Toro Rosso with 32 points, and 9 is Williams with 1 point, and 10 and 11 is Marussia and Caterham with 0 points. Now, Marussia and Caterham are really under pressure, they're really competing, uh, competing with each other, because whoever finishes the 11th doesn't get any points, no, well, not points, but obviously, <laughs> but doesn't get any money at the end of the year, so they're, trying, they're just overtaking race on race. In terms of the constructors, and I don't know really know which one to pick. I think I don't know. I think um, it's really hard to choose between these two teams because well, they just they keep swapping places every race, and it's just it's hard to choose. But I think in Vizel we will have a clear winner. Um, so yeah, next race Abu Dhabi, not a Red Bull track, it's not fast enough, I mean India, um, the cor corners are fast and flowing, so Red Bull were absolutely, Red Bull's car suited, suited the track very much, Abu Dhabi is a bit more slower, and by the way I know I said at the start of my channel that I was going to go to the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, unfortunately I'm not, I'm a bit gutted about that to be honest, but hopefully I will be going. That would be in the first race of, as, of for Sebastian Bell as uh, for a single champion. But anyway, it's just a bit of a shame that I'm not going, but his college working that was going to be pretty hard to catch up with after the Grand Prix weekend. So Abu Dhabi, I think it could be Mercedes versus Lotus versus Ferrari. I think, I don't know, any of the top four could win, or perhaps McLaren. McLaren could um could beat them both, can beat them as well in Abu Dhabi. And so, yep, and that's pretty much the end of the review. And also, um, I know I've been a bit inconsistent in terms of videos, I just haven't got the time um, for my career video. I mean, well, I've got a co op championship with XI Dars, who's one of the admin and one of the racers. And the uh, front row racing, which was European Formula Facebook, but they changed it to front row racing league. Um, we we are now got Abu Dhabi, America, and Brazil. And I'm pleased to say that if Brazil will be a title title decider, will be the decider for the title, then I will live stream it on my Twitch channel, and I will share share it on my channel. Yeah, that's pretty much the end of this review. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. It's been GT Vapping 101, and I'll see you there.